Hey guys, this is Tony Gephardt. We're here at the Kalamazoo Training Center for the Bureau of Services for Blind Persons. And uh, this is just a one, one, one little podcast episode that we're going to do. The theme of it is Talk It Out. And uh, today we're going to do various conversations and just get the, get the, the flow going on stereotypes and certain things that surround what it means to be blind. Um, and I'm, I'm joined here with quite a few people that are attendees at the training center along with myself and a good friend who uh, is visiting from the, uh, the city. So why don't we just do a quick go around and uh, introduce yourselves and uh, yeah. So uh, to my right. All right, yes, yes. To your right is Talia Tevis. I'm coming from Flint, Michigan. Ooh, 810. 810, shout out <laughs> to my Flint zones. But anywho, I am now in Kalamazoo. I am a computer lab assistant specializing in accessibility. I work at Kalamazoo Valley Community College. I'm glad to be here. Mm. All right, to your right. I am Bree. I'm here at the BSBP going through some training to better myself. Love it. I'm Gretchen. I'm also here at the BSP doing training to go out back into the workforce. Mm. I'm Larry. I'm here at the BSP training center to head back to work and get VR training. Thanks, Larry. All right. Greg is in the building. Mm. <laughs> Boom. <Okay>. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Drop the mic. And I'm taking the attack program. What is it? I'm from Detroit, Michigan. Advanced computers. I forgot the assistive word. technology and computers. And computers. Yeah. Yep. And I'm from Detroit. Three one three. Mm. Hi, I'm Taniqua. I'm from Muskegon. <laughs> Hi, Taniqua. She's from the hood. <laughs> 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 oh man! Well, fantastic. It took a little bit to set everything up, but here we are. We're uh, it's it's the sun's out, so I guess really that's what matters. And it's supposed to be like fifty some degrees tomorrow too. Thank God. Exciting. Yeah. I know it was cold. Nice. The cold these last few days, especially with the snow on Wednesday, it was a gross. Scary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, open topic. Really, anything here for the next 10, 15 minutes? What do you all want to talk about? Let's make this as less awkward as possible. <laughs> okay. What's on your minds? Food. Food? Oh. Food. Yeah, this, the food served here is something else, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> if anyone could have any type of plate right now, what would they want? Mm. Chinese. Some authentic tacos. Coconut shrimp with uh, garlic bread. Steak. <laughs> I agree with Greg. I'm thinking that too. Steak and a Merlot. <laughs> Any good cook in here? Any good yeah, cook? I, I'm decent. I'm Steak decent. I can make a good quesadilla. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, anything Hispanic food, um, you got me there. Yeah. Anything food, honestly, as long as you can season well, that's all yeah. I need. Right. Yeah. Okay. For sure. <laughs> but, yeah, um, as far as an open topic, I guess, Tony, what would you like to speak about in mind? Well, shoot. Uh, well, let's start off a little easy with this one. And one of the things that I had planned... Uh, for us to kind of go in depth on was, you know, as folks with disabilities that are are in a society that's heavily populated with sight and that is influenced by sight, you know, there's a lot of stereotypes that surround people with visual impairments and it's something that we always have, we have to endure it, we have to live with it and it's something that, you know, we battle with because we're human and there are some times where we want to, uh, you know, explode and, and, and <laughs> jump, jump all over everybody else who tries to think like, oh, you're blind, so you must need assistance 24 mm-hmm. seven. Or you're blind, you know, you must, uh, you know, uh, you, you, you wear sunglasses all the time or yeah. something like that. So I was curious to was like, what is one stereotype uh, for the whole group here that bothers you probably the most? Because, you know, this is free speech and we just want to express ourselves. And then, you know, the white, once we... The white cane. The white cane. Yep. I say they put blindness in one category. That <coughs> there's basically like two categories. There's low vision and there's completely blind. Like totally blind yeah. versus legally blind? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. I mean, what does legally yeah. blind really even mean? I know scientifically it's 20 over 100 and worse. No. Or is that? Or is that it's 200. 200. 200. Yeah. 20 200. over 200. Yep, yep, 20 over 200. Got you. Now, I want you to, to please, I want you to kind of like unpack that, Greg. What, what do you mean by the white cane? Do you, do you think? Well, as per se, when a person see you with a white cane, me, I have low vision. Sure. So when a person see you with a white cane, they instantly think that you completely are blind. Total. Ah, I see. Like think you're totally blind. Totally yeah. blind, mm-hmm. and that's yes. not the case. Yeah. So do you feel like? Do you feel embarrassed using your cane? Uh. And be be honest. 
I'm curious. Like, do you feel embarrassed when you're walking around with that thing? Do you think not? Other- not, not here. Not here. Uh, not in Kazu. Mm-hmm. No, sure. I don't. You yeah, know, we're maybe. blind capital. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, man. We got everybody. Yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. But uh, maybe back home in Detroit, I probably will. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's yeah. interesting because when I first came here to Kalamazoo, I said the same thing as far as I didn't like traveling with my cane for protection purposes because yeah. back in Flint, Michigan, you know, yeah. we're not mm-hmm. known for being the safest area yeah. and with human trafficking yeah. going on. That and you become a, a lot of things. Um, the cane, I thought, signified as as a weakness. Me too, at sense. first, yep. But Same. now, looking on the other hand of mm-hmm. things, it's like, I I use my cane as strength for myself. I like using mm-hmm. my cane to show, you know what, yeah, I am visually impaired, but watch how I work. Right. Watch how I am. You know? Watch me. Watch me. Also, <laughs> I, love, I love that example of how you said, you know, um, some people come to you and they they think you're fully blind. Yeah, yeah. a lot of people think I'm fully blind as well. Yeah. Yeah. But me being with that cane, showing them that, yeah, I can I can see a little bit. I can yeah. see more. You know, yep. there's, different, there's different visual and pyramids out here in the that's world so right. Right. Yeah. that's definitely true well it's a true. spectrum it's a wider spectrum because yes. I mean I used to be when I before I lost my sight in 2005 when I had my accident I had um, le- I was legally blind 20 over I believe it was 150 out of my left eye or something like that and um, I, I hated using a cane. I did. And, I, and granted, I was a kid, so I was yeah. a hell of a lot more stubborn back yeah, then. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and they always told me, wear your glasses. Wear your gla-. One, you'll get, Leo love this. One time in first grade, I was always forced to wear my glasses and use CCTV devices, and it was always giving me headaches. And one time, um, I told, I, I put my glasses on the fence out in the, out in the uh, playground, mm-hmm. and I came inside. The teacher asked me, where did your glasses go? And I'm saying, I, they're lost. They fell off when I was going down the slide. She got so mad. She, she knew I was lying, too. She told me. <laughs> Did, for real. I, so she asked my friend Jeff. Yeah, for real. And then she asked my friend Jeff to go out and look for him. And then there they were, right on the. Right, well. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but I have a question for you guys too, along that too. Um, I know my resistance also had a lot to do with my own insecurities as far as having yeah. a white cane. But mm-hmm. also, how did others? Um, react around you with carrying your cane because since I am from Flint, you know, my family back at home, they even would tell me in the beginning, like, oh, put that cane away. Like, you you, you don't need that, you know. Take, and that also um, increased my insecurity. And so I'm wondering if any of you guys had those same instances. No, see, with me, I don't carry mine at home either. And my my family don't force me because they know I have one. And so they it, they don't force me because they want me to be comfortable in my own shoes. Mm-hmm. No, my family was kind of the polar opposite. Um, I had to have it out or I would be grounded, stuff like that. And it, it they also scare the crap out of me by talking about that I'll be a target. So between mm-hmm. those two things, I don't love to use my cane. So they kind of contradict themselves. They want me to use it. But they don't want me to go anywhere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of helped me being out here because I'm not around that all the time. Or other people, if you have your cane out, they'll try to grab you and redirect you. It's like, uh, no, now you're yeah. screwing but me up. Yeah. 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 Gretchen, Gretchen, what about you? I haven't been home yet since I've gotten the cane. I didn't use the cane at home, so I'm curious as to how they're going to react, honestly. Okay. Okay. Um, my kids have come up to visit me, and they've been letting me do the cane on my own. And, oh, okay. wow, you're really moving along good, very good. <laughs> but <laughs> as far as the pe- the protectiveness of, of home, I'm not sure how they're going to react yet. You okay. know, it's really interesting to hear that perspective, too, because both Talia and I are heavily involved with the National Federation of the Blind. Yes, yeah. And, like, one of their biggest like gurus is the white cane i mean they they're all about it and i think you know if if there's a way that we can you know better bring that influence of it's about independence Mm -hmm. that's really it like when when, when we look at it that's what the white cane signifies is it's all about independence being able to go out there and do as you wish live the life you want as their slogan you know protests Mm -hmm. and um I, i don't know i after after a couple of years, like it comes down to acceptance, I think, you know, yeah. we have to just embrace and accept the way things are at this very moment, because, you know, you have a choice, you have a choice whether you want to use it or not, that is totally up to you, no one's going to force you to yeah. do it, you're your own boss, but at the same time, with how much you know, and how much could be at risk and stake, mm-hmm. because of your vision acuity, mm-hmm. you know, it, would, it wouldn't hurt you to use it. In my perspective, I always say, join the cane gang, cane okay? Gang. Because join the cane gang. gang. <laughs> that cane represents strings. It represents your your disability. It also lets people know about it. You know, there's so many people out here in the world that are uneducated on that white cane, yeah. and it's because you and know many people don't advocate. Yeah, for it. Don't that's the other one. big. 
big one, right? <laughs> That's the other big one. You know, especially like if you go out there in the real world, then you let's say Taniqua, you know, let's use you for example. You're out there and you're trying to read a menu but you don't want to ask somebody for help. The, that waitress might look at you like, you don't got a can, you ain't blind, you figured mm. out yeah. yourself. You know, and that's ignorant. <laughs> I get that's that ignorant. many times, because I, I, 50-50, sometimes if I know the environment well <laughs> enough, yeah. I may not use my cane all the way all the time. So, right. But sometimes I do catch myself, like if I go into a store that I may think I'm... Um, Familiar, familiar with. with and then I go in there without my cane and I kind of bumps in, into some things most people tend to think I'm a drunk woman rather than, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. rather than I'm visually impaired they do not believe me if I say oh sorry I'm visually impaired they're like no you're not right, you're just drunk. You know? right. and until someone else says no she really is blind then they feel bad but you know it's it's my fault I always say like no no it's my fault because I didn't have my cane to signify that because we are here in a sighted world you know we are. everything we're, is I mean, visual a lot of it comes sense. to we're yeah. a minority whether we like it or not Right. and I think that's a big problem that we see in the blind community is there's more than enough people that are, uh, you know, as you said earlier, insecure mm -hmm. and afraid of what they ha what what they should embrace, you know, and that causes a ripple. Um, and I feel like a big barrier between, you know, changing the world for what it is, because you know how always people say you can go out there and change the world, but do it on a smaller scale. You know, if you open yourself up and you're able to you know, impact somebody around you, they're going to go impact somebody else. Sure. Vice, and, and then, you know, so on and so forth until they've reached a thousand people in your line of, uh, your line of fire. May I ask, uh, you know? Larry, how long have you been using your cane? Me? I used it, when I lived in Flint, I actually used it a lot. Okay. And when I moved up to Traverse City, I kind of used it a little bit here and there, but it's like up there, everybody knew me because it's such a small community. Mm -hmm. It's like everybody like, oh, let me help you. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I pretty much then, I lost the cane because I didn't need it. Everybody was like, <laughs> <laughs> it was like I had personal yeah. canes. canes everywhere. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, what tip would you guys give someone who is being insecure about having their cane but wants to? What tip would you give them to overcome that? It's always the hardest part because I've worked with kids in the past and during summer camps who always refuse to use their cane. And you know, the best thing I can say is. I'll tell them straight out is it doesn't make you look stupid like you know it, it doesn't make you look a certain way I mean granted it is all perspective driven but you know if you want help out there because eventually you're going to realize you're not going to be able to do certain things that yep. your sighted friends are going to do mm -hmm. yeah but you and the, but even then I'll counteract that and say you'll have to figure out a different way yeah. you become what, more independent right you become yeah. more independent but the thing is, if you if you want your friends and your family to see that you're willing to accept what you have, so you can embrace that new lifestyle, then you you know, and this sounds kind of evasive, but like you best get with the game mm -hmm. and understand like you got to do some sacrificing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. You know, but then you'll gain so much more in the process, even though it feels like in that moment you're losing so much. Yeah. But it's a bigger rope than just a small thread. Gretchen, do you feel like the cane is helpful to you? I do feel like it's helpful. I was just thinking that, um, kind of like what you said about they didn't know if you were a drunk woman coming in. <laughs> yeah. uh, people didn't understand why I was being led around by my family. Mm. And they wouldn't address me. They would talk to my family members. So uh, that's the worst. That's hard. I'm here. I tell you what. I'm here. So, yeah. Because they don't, I mean, the cane is a very good clue. As to it's like, where's your handler? Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That happened to me one time <laughs> out there at the casino. They thought I was drunk because I didn't have my cane. <laughs> Go ahead, Bree. But one of the one of the things along with that is like if you go and pay and they give your change to the person next to you, yeah. right. oh no! Right. In, instead of you because they think you're not competent mm -hmm. enough. Right. The other thing I hate too is when everybody it. starts talking loud like you're deaf. Oh, oh man, yeah. can you hear me? <laughs> it's, it's, it's like yeah, I ain't Helen really Keller, dog. Slow, sir. <laughs> right, right. Sir. Most right. of the time, it's older men who ask, like, why I have a cane because I'm so young. And yeah, everything. that's what it's, they say. That doesn't have anything to do with it. It's a mobility cane for my like eyes. Death. That reminded me when I first came here to Kalamazoo, I had this guy got on the bus and he said, you're too pretty to have this cane. I said, <laughs> what a pickup line. No, right. no. That was, that was, what are you I trying said, to no, do? homeboy, this cane is what makes me beautiful, you know, at the same time, because this is a part of me, and I'm out here, you know? Mm, tell them. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah I've definitely you, encountered some funny stories with my cane. Since you came here, you got a little bit more skills with the mobility. Tell us about the story when you went home and your son seen your new skills that you had. Boy, did he struggle. 
<laughs> like, I would go out to the bus because he was so used to me, like, leading me around. Mm-hmm. He's sitting there looking back at me, and I'm sitting there whacking his ankles with the cane the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, man, I'm locked out of the bus. Get out of my way. <laughs> I got just, somewhere to be. I don't need you to guide me there right now. Yep. He just kept looking back, and finally after a couple bus transfers, he's like, man, uh, you know what you're doing. Yeah. Mm. But like he said, he actually after that, he kind of, because like I was kind of, you know, you know, veering a little bit here and there, because sure. I'm still getting used to it again, because it's sure. been a long time. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's just sitting there like shutting up, just looking at me. He's like, man, you scared me a couple times, but you got it all. You <laughs> yep. got it all. That's I was right. like, exactly. That's what I would say to the kids. Yeah. That cane will and save you for hurting yourself. Right, and it's more futuristic. you got to look ahead, and that's always the problem, especially when you're dealing with that uh, you know, transition, especially if you're newly blind, is you're more in the moment right now, and you're not thinking about anything else, and then you're thinking about your past and how you used to have vision. Mm-hmm. You know what yep. I'm saying? That's hard. I used to have my vision. I still think about it. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wish I could be still playing Grand Theft Auto Five with my friend or Gra- San-, San Andreas with my buds, you know, or skateboarding and stuff like that. And then sometimes, and that, and, but you know, at the end of the day, I look around and I see other blind people still doing that. I like yeah. And it reminds a, me, like, you can still keep doing this. I like to ask a heavy question. Yeah. For those where your your vision started getting worse, or you lost your vision, is that some point in your life you went through depression? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yes. I didn't, yeah. I've always had vision issues, but it's yeah. So we all can basically. About I think depression right? is honestly a state that we all carry with us. I don't look at depression as a disease. Or it's, a sit- it's, it's a situation. Yeah, it's a situation, and it's how we process it in that moment. Yeah. You know what I you mean? Know, right. so I think that yes, of course, we're all going to have those bad days. Oh, we're blind. Oh, we can't have the same thing. But you always have to have that growth. Well, it, it's more so heavy. When that transition happened from, oh, I can see to, wait a minute, my vision got worse or my vision is gone? Oddly for me, uh, I mean, I'm being all the way honest right now. I was sighted until I was 19 years old, and I don't believe that I've ever had that mental breakdown stage that I've lost my vision. It's always been something well, that I kind of yeah. took with it, and I was like, alright. Well, another thing I gotta go through in life, because I've been through a lot in my life, so it's like, another okay. thing I gotta go through in my stars. life, let's just right. pick it yeah. up and go with it. And okay. that's kind of where well, you, I took it. Well, you are you are one out of many. And yeah. I remember for the most part. one of my big ones, and I don't dig too far in the past with this, but you know, for this, I feel it's necessary to show that vulnerability, especially for all of us who want to be empathetic. You know, and and share this. I I remember it was right after my accident in 2005. Um, I I was involved in a trampoline accident with an exposed wiring on the spring that had punctured through my cornea when I came oh. face down to it. Mm-hmm. And I remember at nine years old being in the basement just crying my eyes out with my mom, thinking I'll never have my sight again. You know, I'll never be able to see again. You know, so, you know, it, it happens. Like, there's mm-hmm. going to be a moment where you you are, you are enduring such a transition that's, you know, on such a different level of, you know, uh, of horrible, I guess. Mm-hmm. You know, just to put it plain and simple, at the time when stuff like that happens, you can't justify it no other way. It sucks, mm-hmm. you know. Because that's what you're used to. That's what you've endured for most of your life, and that's what you know is to be normal, mm-hmm. is sight or 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 uh, you know just being able to perceive things with the visual acuity. And here we are now. To yeah. go along with that, though, if you guys were asked if you could have your vision back, would you? No. Me either. I wouldn't. That would be difficult because I I'd probably, probably, I'd probably say yeah. I would. Do. I would I say. Would yeah. I would say yeah, and then I would probably want to turn around and do something for the visually impaired folk that couldn't yeah, change absolutely. their vision. You know, mm-hmm. I would try to find that solution that helps me help them. Yep. So, see, with, amen. See, I like that. Okay, I wouldn't say I would change it. Well, like, wish well, I had my sight back. You know, if I was completely blind. Speaking for a low vision person, if there was a cure. I I will hope that I could get that care, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And well, like, be like, able I agree. To, to me, though, like having the eyesight, you can be mm-hmm. such a bigger help to others. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. What, you know, what, what, because you've been there. You I want to cha- I want to challenge you there. You know, having your ve- vision back, you, you believed to, that you could be a help, which I agree with. I see your side of that. Mm-hmm. At the same time, though, regardless of what happens, if you go totally blind, now this is bias, but being somebody who's totally blind, I feel like. I've, I can embrace this. 
-hmm. Over time, I have the power now after 14 years. Yeah, Granted, there's collateral. Yeah, yeah, there's right. time. I've and like time heals all wounds, as we right. all know that. Like I said, I've been totally blind for 21 years, too. I, I, I understand what you're saying there, too. Yep. Right. We can but be the mentors. I, I think the most thing... No, sorry, am I cutting you off? No. Okay, no, okay, no. Sorry. But um, I think the most scary thing for me um, with hearing that I was going to go blind is that I felt like everything in my life was going to stop. Like, I wasn't going to be capable of doing anything but collect a disability check. That's and that's because I had a lot of people around me doubting me. Mm -hmm. And so when I came to the training center and they gave me opportunities, yep. like, just a chance. Mm -hmm. yep. Show yep. me a Second chance. Second life. Yep. You know, New life. It, right. It honestly made me take me going into blindness as a transformation rather than... Um, what's a good word for it? A loss, in a sense. Loss, yeah. yeah. You know, or so tribulation. It's you like, know. as long as people just continue giving us chances, giving being realistic with us, in a sense, too, we're able to do anything. Mm. Yeah. I agree with that. Now, I was just told recently that my vision would get worse. So, um, I didn't really think past high school, and when I got out, I was like, now what? Because I didn't face the fact that I was going to deteriorate in vision as well as um, physical capabilities because I got that in the neuropathy diagnosis right after that. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't really think past it. And <clears throat> now I'm kind of in that phase where I'm trying to accept everything and now I have to move forward, but I wasn't able to prepare because I didn't want to face it. Hmm. Well, the beautiful thing is, you know, like, when we kind of bring this all together and kind of to one centerpiece, we're all here. We, we've made choices to better ourselves you know, and to rehabilitate in, in a sense. And this will kind of carry on to the next topic. But, you know, here we are wanting to make a new, and as well as just be a mentor, being mentored and mentored or mentored and be, uh, you know, that per, that that um, influence for somebody who who's going through exactly what we're doing. Because the best thing is we're talking it out. And we're, we're giving ourselves a chance to have that voice. Right. It's and a that's great huge. support for each other, too. Yeah. Correct. Like, you know, yeah. Yeah. Best support system. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. My blind community, person. my blind friends all around me, I, I've literally met some of the best people in the world, and I became friends with for... Like that back in my back in my day, my people at home, I had to let them go because I started realizing, yep. like, hold on, you guys aren't really as genuine as I thought you guys right. were. Right, and when you oh, graduate high school, ain't nobody care. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody just flies right. by the wayside. You can get married, get pregnant, right. and move. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I want to transition into something kind of deep. Um, you know, it, it has a lot of relation to what we was just talking about, and that is, you know. As folks going into rehabilitation and vocational assistance and therapy and things of that nature, what is it as blind consumers that that we expect out of folks who are sighted going into a rehabilitation field? For example, you know, our counselors, field counselors, an, an occupational therapist or somebody who works for blind people. You know, this is going to get a little heated, so we'll try and keep mm -hmm. it. We'll, we'll keep this at, at kind of at bay. But this is something that needs to be spoken. You want to start to the left? I got to think about my answer. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So you know, I want to just kind of start it off and say, you know, what do we expect out of people like that? Because we're the ones who are in those shoes. They ain't. And how do we help them help us? Because then there comes a point where we're we're the ones sitting here like. You don't get what we're going through right now. Yeah. I will say I would want them to respect me as a, a um as a business person. A person that a participant. Yeah, as, as Oh my god. <laughs> I told you I was gonna say it at some point, so all right. As it's a, off my chest. As a like a individual, right. you know, right. treat me as if I was a sighted person, you know, mm -hmm. don't treat me as okay. Just treat me you, as a person, sighted yeah, or blind. Just sighted person. or blind. But yeah. Treat me as you would like to be treated. Because what if I come into your business and you was sighted and I just start changing <laughs> rules? Mm -hmm. You wouldn't like that. Mm -hmm. So don't come into my, you know, my employ, my place of employment and start changing things. And mm -hmm. then, you know. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So shoot your like your confidence mm -hmm. too. Yeah, just more so, just just motivation. Yeah, mm -hmm. just motivation. But coming from that aspect, I can't expect a person that's that sighted mm -hmm. to understand a person that's blind or no. low vision. We can't, because they will never, you know, know until they get up in their 
and yeah, it they would say stuff, they would know? they would say that they yeah. Yeah. understand, but truly, just like a person that's deaf, I mm-hmm. wouldn't really but, understand. But let me challenge you then. What? So my question then would be: Is how can us? You know, us as the group, we're, we're the machine, or not mm-hmm. the machine, but we're the, the front line yeah. mm-hmm. of people that are coming in to get the help that we need to be successful and get mm-hmm. a job mm-hmm. and stop those disability checks, yeah. you know, et cetera, like uh, all that. Or what, increase them, please. Or, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 721 ain't cutting it. <laughs> but, like, what, what would you want it to, like, if you were having a sit down with Director mm-hmm. Bill Robinson right yeah. now of the Bureau of Services for Blind Persons in Lansing, mm-hmm. Michigan? Yeah. And you, you were gonna say, you know, here, Bill, this, this is how I think things need to work mm-hmm. coming from a blind person. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, can I chime in? Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, so my answer for this, now that it's on my brain, <laughs> is I would say honestly, I would want truth, and with that, mm-hmm. I would want consistency and stability. Yeah. I would like a blueprint for you know, because. For, I'm an independent woman. I've always yeah. been like that. I'm not asking for more than what I deserve. I'm not trying to take more than what I need. So I feel as if, as consumers, we should be given a blueprint mm-hmm. of all the things that we are able yeah. to get, yeah. all of the, the programs that we're able to be included in, what are the requirements, what are the guidelines to it, how much is it. I want every, right. every piece of detail <laughs> because let me tell you, I've signed too many IEPs that are not Woo! matching what I'm being given. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm getting yeah. sick of it because it's not making sense. Yeah. Right. It's like, is this contractual? They're telling me one minute it is, yes. one minute it's not a contract. So what is it? Give me some stability. Give me some truth. Give me some consistency. I think communication is another and big one, too. And right. with that is true. Right. Right. Truth is con- communication, all of that. Just right. give me the truth. Right. It's just give like the truth. Uh, a couple of days ago, I went on a interview, job interview. Mm. Uh, rather, he's blind or low vision. Don't nobody know. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, it was about uh, it was engineering, and he went through the process. They say he did a good job, but they just looked at him like, well, you know, there's no way you'll be able to get this job because engineering is, is mainly with sight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So to me, that was kind of a goofy place to send him. You know what I'm saying? Because you need sight to be an engineer. You yeah, know? it's going to hurt somebody's that confidence. That have better adaptations for it. Yeah, well, so it's yeah. like, they, just like how to, uh, to live was saying, it's like, yo, let me know the requirements and, yes. and, and, and send me somewhere where I know that I can be able to take care of this and, and handle this with my vision. The tech, not technology is our so number one. be realistic one. in a yeah. sense with me with my capabilities? Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Or well, and I think what, for, or, let's go ahead, too. Or okay. what, how can I, like, get adaptable equipment for this job, okay. you know? Yeah. Well, that's what I don't get. Like you said, with mm-hmm. all them workers and stuff, one person and they get this. They're like, how do you get that? Oh, no, that's exactly. Work. Exactly. And then the next person, what would you hear? I'm, they're doing the exact same thing you're doing, but you got this equipment. They don't have that equipment. Well, how do yeah. you get yeah. that? You and know? I've seen, um, this is honest, you can look. Mm-hmm. In BSBP, they have clients that they fund for yeah. that honestly are not really up to par on yes. their ambition skills. Right. And those of us who do have a high ambition. drive. And dreams. Yeah. And, and dreams. desires are not getting pushed good enough or yes. whatever. It's like, yep. I, I don't understand because I'm, my work speaks for itself. Correct. Why am As I not getting mine. the support? As, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, because the position that I'm in is because of Talia Maria Tevis. It's yes. not because of anyone else. And I can proudly say that. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. right. we'll, we'll be back in a minute. <laughs> uh, if, do you guys want to cut for a quick break? Well, sure. do you three over there have any commentary on it? Gretchen, yeah. we don't at the moment. Um, what would you like from your counselor? What would you expect I from them? Respect. I, yeah. I, I found it very difficult. I have. There's a respect of not being in communication, not calling back, not mm-hmm. saying what's going on, mm-hmm. not not understanding the process, not understanding why the mm-hmm. process goes on and on and on, not understanding why things. the ball just feels like it was dropped a yes. long time. And yeah. if I had advocated for myself, I don't think I'd ever have gotten here. Right? And pray, you know, praise God for that. Like, you you taking the initiative, that's 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 a role model. That's what's going to get that's, you far. You are a role model because you are taking the step that you need to get somebody's attention. Because there's, there's a lot of the time, 
you know, a lot, if you look at the uh, general population of blind people, a lot of us are scared. Yeah. A lot of them are oh, scared. Absolutely. They don't want to speak up. They don't want to say anything because for yeah. all their life, they were told to shut the hell up and, and you know, sit still, yeah. you See, know, and, and I've always been wait for opposite. someone to do it for you. I'm like, the squeaky wheel right. is yeah. the one that gets the grease. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah and I press my counselor. I press them every week. I press them. Yeah, I hear you, man. You're calling them all the time. And to stem on that, it's like, okay, so we're looking at it from consumers' I speak to counselors and I see kind of their end of drama at land. So I see that honestly, they are too full with the caseload. We they need, do. We I've heard, need I heard they have like counselors. 50 some people. There's, okay, my counselor has over 80 cases right Mine's now. He should right. not have that much cases because Mine's how high. can he come here? Yeah, yeah, how can he Holy com- how can he communicate with me? How can he realistically yeah. get his job done? I had to tell him. I had to get on him on a weekend. And, and how I many field him. counselors Sometimes do they have? have to take you work home like it's only about to, to lessen the work field uh, um, it, during the week. I said, mm-hmm. you're going to have to take the work home. Yeah. You know, he responded back to me that week and got what I needed. There you go. Because you got, that's you what you have to do. You, you have person. to be persistent. Yeah. You, you have person. to handle yep. your business because these people are working uh, there's so many blind people yes. out in the state of Michigan. Yeah. They, yes. they have so much work. There's over 200 consumers in the BSBP right now. I think that that wow. should strongly be took into consideration because that's not our fault or our mm-hmm. responsibility. Understood. That's you. That's y'all. No, and not then they're, together. And then they're <laughs> doing it together. <laughs> Let's yes. talk about it. <laughs> Let's talk about it. There you go. Bray, did you have Impressive. No, not with the counselors part of it, but something that I feel like needs to be done is they need to have better outreach. I didn't know about mm. any adaptations yeah. or anything. I had an IEP, but it was not exactly the best when I was growing up well, because that, we didn't have anything. And well, I grew up in a small town, so I was the only visually impaired person, and yeah. I was alienated. Yeah. yeah. So and not given anything, and then I graduated. And then they were like, oh, there's this program. And I'm like, I could have known about this four years ago. Yeah, that's how I yeah. feel. So yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, Just outreach kind of sucks. Mm-hmm. It just felt like a carrot being dangled in front of you. These are the yes. tools that we can give you to help you. Yeah. How do I get them? Well, mm. oh, you're gonna have to <laughs> I have to do it for you, and I'll call you back. But I'm never going to call Jump you back, and I'm never going to return your phone calls to find out to how I can get it access. But, but it's out there for you. <laughs> right. So let's kind of bring this in. from Because th- this was great. This was fantastic, I think a lot of us really needed to decompress a a significant amount of you know just concern Mm -hmm. and and um advice you know especially from the consumer standpoint and talia you're right i mean a lot of our counselors i mean one one of the state's counselors just quit not too long ago and dropped 40 people Mm -hmm. onto our counselor which i thought was insane you'd think they would distribute yeah. You know, or, or be more. And you know what's even funnier? I'll b- kind of bring my last comment on this. I didn't know that he, my, my last counselor, quit until I called. Oh, yeah. 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 Which was, I thought, because they said, oh, we sent a letter. Who the hell reads letters? <laughs> <laughs> We're blind. Why are you sending me print letters? I'm not going to use seeing AI to distribute this, you know, or to, to read yeah. uh, OCR this. You know, you need you need to give me this in a format that I've already asked for in the beginning. Well, that should have been at least a phone call. Or a right? phone call. See, that's serious business with your counselor. You know, that's communication. That is. Yeah. They expect us to communicate with them. We, we need the same feedback. Right. We need right. Well, feedback. mine gives me what she likes to call homework. Yeah. Like, oh, here, yeah, you do too. all this, you call me back, let me know what you figured out. You know, like, and then I'll get a hold of Yeah, you know. And now, just, to advocate, though, I do want to advocate on their behalf, you know, uh, it's it's a teamwork basis. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, a lot. Right. we have to be just as, uh, right. you know, in, in the in the flow of the things and the front line as they do. Yeah. You know. I don't mind the homework because I feel yeah, like it's kind of it gives us something to do. Right. It yeah. gives us something to do. Who's we need to prove to ourselves. Yeah. It, yeah. 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 Like, who's willing to be ambitious? Because if they're going to buy a laptop and and support you through school, you got to be the one to show that you can be invested. Yeah. 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 Right. And that's what they yeah. said. Like you said, that they want to see that you're motivated and stuff. Right. I'm just, like you said, but correct. Yeah. Yeah, but it's right. like, too, it's like, though, it's like, when you give me a home rate, at least like give me some guidelines on where I'm going with it. That's my issue. And, with it. and I don't want to say all counselors are like that because there are some really great counselors mm-hmm. that will bend backwards for you. Oh, yeah. I've spoken to right, counselors right. that aren't oh, even yeah. my counselors, you know. and they've bent and like backwards said, for me. They're so overloaded. Right. I will they definitely are. say I think <laughs> those that are appreciative and supportive of, of us and those who aren't get it together because we're going to come for you. We have potential, and we definitely deserve to let it be. Be shown, you so. know, and if you if you ask me, I think we run this. 
for yeah. sure. You know, yeah. it's about yeah. us. We're the ones that are, um, you know, on the on the line of things. You know, well, like you said, if we look good, they look good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We look good, they look good. That is the truth. And that's business. Mm-hmm. Do, that's uh, business too. That do is. anybody have any? Oh, hey, Gretchen. No, I was agreeing with Larry. Oh, okay. <laughs> do anybody have any last thoughts? Final thoughts? Um, well. Let's kind of wrap everything up, if you guys would like, since we started a little late. Mm-hmm. I'd say let's uh, kind of just wave this this way. Um, you know, a lot of us are ending programs here very soon yeah. at the training center. I know myself and Greg have been involved with the Assistive Technologies and Computers program. And, um, you know, what, what is everybody's ambitions once they're done? You know, what, what are you thinking about right now as you draw nearer? Now, I, I know a couple of you might still have some time to go. So, you know, if you want to express your, um, you know, time, like, how, how do you feel like things have been going? Well, starting with you, Tony. All right. Um, I'm two weeks out before graduation, both myself and Greg are. And um, once I'm done here, I'm taking a couple months off to travel and play music and uh, spend time with my family before I start this assistive technology instructor certification program down south in Little Rock, Arkansas at the World Services for the Blind facility. And um, while down there, I'm going to be doing student teaching at the School for the Blind in Little Rock and um, working with uh, individuals at the training center and uh, getting certified in JAWS, Zoom Text, Fusion, et cetera, et cetera. Sweet, sweet. It's going to be fun. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It's a dream come true. You know, uh, last year was, was a very uh, depressing year for me, and I was not in the right track or the right mindset with anything or everything that was going on. You know, there's a point where a person has to be broken down completely and lose, yes. lose some friends life. in order to yep. see the feedback that they yeah. needed. And I feel like I've been able to turn my life around. Praise God for that. Amen. You Amen. know? And um, but yeah, that's that's where I'm going. You know, no no stopping either. So. All right, Talia. Um, well, I am not a part of the training center anymore. I like to say that I graduated. All right. Um, like I said, I work at a community college right now. I also praise dance at the local church here. All right. Mm. Um, yes, yes, and I'm a new founding mother, so okay. I have a lot on my plate. I'm just here to kind of show blind people that they're able to do anything as long as you keep the growth mindset. And, and you can be blind and striving. be a parent. Yeah, you can be a that's blind a parent. That's a big one. Which right um, I would like to that's say, follow me on blind beliefs. That's B L. I N D B L E E P S on YouTube as well as Blind Connection. Those you will find um, <laughs> two two YouTube channels where we discuss all types of things blindness related, parenting, all kind of good jazz, parent, praise dancing on there, everything. But right. um, yeah, I I do a lot. So okay, Bree, just, Bree. just stay positive. That's all I Amen. say. Yeah. Um, after my training is done, which I three or so weeks left um i am going to try to go into college and get an apartment around here um i just started living on or i just started kind of transitioning into being on my own um i want to go to college for either mechanical engineering psycho psychology on the criminal justice aspect or business and i'm trying to figure out what i want to do sweet gretchen i am about halfway through my training here right. and Yes, and I'm so grateful to be here. Before I got here, I didn't think there was hardly anything open yeah. for me. Life as I thought it was going to, was going to be <clears throat> was completely different, but it doesn't have to be. So I've been in the business world. I'd like to go back. I'm excited with the new skills and the new confidence and the new support <laughs> that's been here, and I can't wait to keep going and get to the places where you guys are at. I agree. Mm-hmm. Larry, Larry. I'm going on week four. I have no clue how long I'm going to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be here until the moment, man. kicking and screaming. And Your son's probably happy, though, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, that he is. But uh, I'm going into the uh, business enterprise program. And all right. I'm going to be here until it's accomplished. All right. Woo. Well, I'm G. Butler. And uh, Greg, boom, <laughs> and boom, boom, you know what I'm saying. And uh, <laughs> I'm finishing up the attack program in two weeks, and uh, ten days after that, I'm starting the BEP uh, program, and hopefully, be successful in that. Can and we let those know who what BEP? Because I'm also in BEP, but oh, for those uh, who don't know, business what it is. enterprise program. And to me, you can give a nice breakdown. No, go ahead, go ahead. Well, it's um for people <laughs> with impaired vision. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> Try to put all the weight on you. Dang. I help you out. I help you out. For people with impaired vision or, you know, totally blind, uh, 
they dedicate the states and federal buildings okay. to us. So the BEP program is, <laughs> like you said, the Business Enterprise Program. It's uh, ran off of the Randall Shepard Act that was founded in 1936. Um, it's basically an act that lets, like you said, visually impaired people own small businesses within federal government buildings, as well as the vending machines on the highways that you see um, there. So yeah, we're all going to own our own businesses, and we're going to hopefully make a lot of money. So there. I wish you guys the best of luck. Yo. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, Taniqua. Um, I should be fish finishing up in three weeks or so. Um, when I get done, I'm I'm ready to get <coughs> to work and be independent, ready to move out on my own and go back to school. All right. All right. Well, fantastic. Just to conclude things, you know, if anybody who is listening to this publication and is interested, you know, in, in taking that next step for yourself, if you're in a position of blindness and visual impairment and, you know, you want to crack that particular shell into bettering yourself, there are centers all across the country as well as rehabilitation centers that uh, can assist you in every state, at least most that I know of. Um, some of the most popular ones are Colorado Center for the Bl uh, of the Blind, which is in um, what, what's that city? It's in Col I know it's in Col Colorado. Denver? Huh? Denver? No, no, no. Um, Littleton, Littleton, Colorado. Uh, Louisiana Center for the Blind in Ruston, Louisiana, as well mm -hmm. as uh, Blind Inc. in um, Mi My Minneapolis, house, Minnesota. Yeah. Um, but nevertheless, thank you guys so much for doing this. And, and always remember, life is not a race. Go at your own pace. Yes. And don't forget, so, mm -hmm. live like life. Don't let life live don't you. Don't let life live mm -hmm. you. Right on. All right. Gang, gang. Gang, gang. All right. <laughs>